And I realized looking at some responses that we just needed to go over a few um, key facts, like what is a term? So the directions here was to select two or more squares and then write their sum using the fewest number of terms. And um, let's take 4x plus 1. It's probably the most com complex of the uh, four squares available here. We have 4x and we have 1. And we would say that this expression has two terms. Notice I use the word expression. It's an expression because it's made up of terms and it doesn't have an equal sign. If I selected that one and this one and this one, I would write these three as 4x plus one plus 9x. And there's two ways I could write the last one. I could put it as plus negative 2x, or I could just write it as negative 2x. A plus sign when we're um, looking at expressions and equations can often just be thought of as and. And so what we're saying here is that we have now four terms, 4x plus 1 plus 9x and also a negative 2x. Those are our four terms. We have the same four terms here. We just left this plus sign that's up above invisible. Notice that when I made the plus sign visible, I also put these parentheses. That was to se separate the plus sign and the negative sign or the subtraction sign. Um, because when we have two um, signs next to each other like that, they, they sometimes can get lost in an expression or an equation. So now that we know we've got four terms here, <clears throat> we're looking for like terms. I'm going to go back to doing a little color coding. This is 4x. The 4 is called a coefficient, and it's being multiplied by the x. And I know for some of you, this is a review, but I just wanted to make this really clear so we all have a common understanding. This is a like term. And so is this. They're like terms because they both have an x that goes with the coefficient. This is its own term. It's what we call a constant. A constant is a number that's by itself. Um, and we know what 1 equals. 1 equals 1. 4x is not a constant because we don't know what the x is. And we could change what the x is. And that 4x would mean different things. So that's where that phrase constant comes from. The one is not going to change. So now I'm going to combine my like terms. I have 4x, 9x, and negative 2x. And I'm just going to add the coefficients. So 4 plus 9 is 13. So now I have 13x plus 1 minus 2x. And 13x minus 2x would give me 11x plus 1. This is the fewest terms possible. I can't combine 11x and 1 because the 1 doesn't have an x that goes with it. If, let me go back to this originally and choose a different set. What if I had chosen just these two squares? Well, that's a different expression. I would have negative 2x and a negative 10x. Or I could write that as negative 2x minus 10x. Both coefficients here are negative. I have negative 2 and negative 10. And so when I combine negative 2 and negative 10, I end up with negative 12 x 
and that is its lowest number of terms or fewest number of terms. This is slide seven, and I'm going to move all of you there if you are in. Hold on, I just messed that up. Move everybody to slide seven. If you are not in this Desmos with us, I'm going to put the link in the chat. I know a few of you joined us since I last put it in there. So this one was interesting because we've got this set here. And I just want to be really clear that when we see a, a number or a constant next to a parentheses, then that means we need to share out or distribute that. I showed you this the other day, but I'm not sure all of you were with us. This is the typical way of showing it where we distribute that. Um, in the past in class, we, we like to call that the claw because we've got like two fingers pointing at things that are being multiplied. And this could be rewritten as three times X. Sorry, that's supposed to be a parentheses. Plus three times one. When these start getting really long, like there's more things inside the parentheses, it can be confusing. Um, I am very into visual, nice, clean things. And so I like to do distribution like this, where the term that's from the front is on the top and the terms that are inside the parentheses are here. Notice that X is by itself, but there is what we call invisible ones in math. They're all over the place. We love invisibles in math. And so I'd like you to picture that in this original here, there's a one in front of it. That and highlighter is a little thick there. There would be a one in front because it's just an X by itself. So that's a one X. So when we're multiplying, we're going to multiply that three times one because the coefficients is what's getting multiplied. And three times one is three. So this term would be turned into three X. And then three times one would be three. Notice what I put inside these boxes here. This is like a times table where I've taken the three at the and multiplied it by this to get this. And then I've gone back to this three at the top and I've multiplied it by this to get this. So both of these here, three X, three times one X plus one, or this three times X plus three times one gives us three X plus three. So this one would need to be rewritten as three X plus three. I'm going to get rid of all of this now and go back the direction, say select two or more squares, write their sum using the first fewest number of terms. I'm going to take this one and this one then and say 8x plus 8 plus 3x plus 3. And I want to show this is a like term. And this is a like term. And what's the like term of eight? The three. Now I didn't do this on the last screen, but I'm gonna do it here because we've got two different kinds of like terms. I have what I highlighted in blue, the ones with the variables. And I have the ones I highlighted in yellow, which are just the numbers or constants. And I just rewrote this so the ones that go together are now next to each other. And we could be even make this more visually obvious what goes together by now putting parentheses around the like terms if we want. So I have 8x plus 3x 
or 8x and 3x plus 8 plus 3. And 8 plus 3 is 11, so I get 11x plus 11. And that is as far as I can go with that one. So before I move on to slide eight, oh, Mele is asking what my strategy with the times table is called. Oh, I erased it, Mele. Um, it's called different things. I've seen it called the box method. I've seen it called the matrix. I've seen it called um, an, a times table. We use it a lot in algebra because we start having um, some pretty complex things that we're multiplying together. And if you start using that method now, it will really help next year. Mr. Uh, Kraft can let you know, we're getting close to doing that with our algebra students right now, where they'll be multiplying two terms by three terms or more. Um, okay, so any questions before I, I was gonna move on to this slide, which is where many of you ended up finishing yesterday. We didn't get many, too many people past slide eight. Um, I've opened this up so you can get to slide eight. Caleb added these expressions, but he made an error. Find the error and explain why it's incorrect. Well, I don't know about you, um, but I have a hard time looking at other people's work without doing the work myself first. Um, and that's true of me now after teaching math for so many years. I still need to do the work myself and then I look at what they did and see what the mistake might have been. So I see here that Caleb has chosen these top two boxes. So I'm going to put down negative 2x minus 2 plus 8x plus 8. I want to make sure that what I've written is what I see in these two boxes. And then the first thing I do is I go and look and see if he wrote the same thing I did. Negative 2x plus minus 2 plus 8x plus 8. And so far, so good. What I see Caleb is doing next is he's combining like terms because I see the, the x's together and the non x's together or the constants. So since I'm doing this where I can color code, I'm going to color code the things with X's. Notice when I do that, and I was doing this on the previous screens, I'm also highlighting the symbol that's in front. That's really important because the symbol that's in front goes with that term. It's part of the term. Our first term here is not 2X, it's negative 2X, and that's important. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 2X plus 8x minus 2 plus 8. And I want to check what Caleb did and see if he has the same thing I have. Negative 2x plus 8x minus 2 plus 8. OK, so far, so good. So Caleb wrote the first step down where he took everything out of the boxes correctly. He put the like terms next to each other. Now we're going to combine like terms. I'll put parentheses around because I just like visually to be able to do that. With the x's, it's keeping them together. Uh, negative 2x, positive 8 means a positive 6x. And then I'm left with negative 2 over here and positive 8, and I get positive 6. And that's what I see Caleb has here. So what is Caleb's mistake? And I can go to what some of you said yesterday. Um, it's in alphabetical order what I'm looking at. So Aklam is first and she said he wasn't supposed to add 6x and 6. He was supposed to leave it just like that. And I think that's a hard part about moving into this kind of math. This doesn't feel complete because there's two terms there and Caleb got it down to one term, but that's where the mistake was. As a teacher, I would be looking at this. Whoops, sorry, I don't know what I just switched to. I'm going to just get this off my screen. 
clearly that was my notes for our Thanksgiving dinner and I don't know how I switched to that accidentally. But what we saw Caleb doing there is pretty common um, in that a, the student wanted something to be more finished than it looked and so combined things that were not like terms. So I'm going to stop the pacing. There were quite a few people um, who didn't finish this yesterday. And the people who did finish it, there's only one who finished it perfectly. And I will private message that person so they can take off. Um, otherwise, I'm going to start leaving some notes for things that you can fix in the Desmos. And let's just take the time today to finish yesterday's, uh, what we started yesterday and finish it correctly with hopefully a better understanding of like terms. Oops, and I just realized we're still recording. We don't need that. <laughs> 